Wednesday, October 18th. Bogan and Trouble Pups. Uh, this is probably the last update on this litter before they start leaving next weekend. And I want to do something a little different. These videos are generally made for people who follow the program and more often than not for those who have deposits in and what's not and they know why they're following and blah 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 but as i look at youtube I, i'm convinced a lot of people that are watching these to have no idea why or what they you know they they wander here so i want to talk a little bit to them for those of you who will then be hearing things you already know forgive me um but the primary two ingredients in this cross uh are Dane and Borble. A Borble is a South African Mastiff. They're looking at these goats. Oh, and you looking at those goats? Those are new goats, aren't they? Um, so you could call them Danifs, in a sense. There's other Mastiffs in there. The, the, first of all, for those not deep in dogs, they think that as a Mastiff, they think of an English Mastiff, as if that's the only type. There are many types. Many countries have their version of a Mastiff. Um, even in this female, who's relatively simply bred, relative to him anyway, she's got a South African Mastiff or Bull Wolf. She's got Dogo Argentino, which some people call an Argentine Mastiff. Uh, she's got Turkish Kangal. To call that a Mastiff is a stretch, but they have a, a Turkish Mastiff also uh, by various names. So, um, the problem with Danifs, in the classic sense, in that is a Great Dane to an Old English Mastiff, is both of those breeds are ruined thoroughly and absolutely beyond saving as a breed. Um, so the odds of finding one worth feeding, much less breeding, much less two, are, are really infinitesimal. I've been looking all over the world for years. Um, I've only used one Dane ever. Um, it's really hard. Those are ruined breeds. So, will they be healthier than a Dane or an English Mastiff? Yeah, probably. Let's see if I get these guys to move around. <whistles> Come here, guys. Uh, but, but you can't cross two dumb dogs and make them smart. Or two cowardly dogs and make them brave. There's only so much that crossing can do. So, which is why the, I generally am working with these less gentrified breeds, um, less well-known working breeds, because they are not as ruined yet, although they get ruined without fail as they become more popular. Popularity um, ruins breeds. That's the, that's the cold hard fact. I'm trying to... Why are you guys up here? Now, usually I have a helper when I do these videos, but today I don't, so I'm staying outside the gate, because... If I go in there, they'll just be all over my ankles. We'll be looking straight down. Anyway, the idea uh, is to cross the best examples of breeds not yet destroyed and pick from the best from those and so on, which has been going on for, you know, 15, 20 years out here. And this male is out of another guy's program, Midgard Mastiff, David Ishii. And I'm confident he's been doing the same thing, right? There's Dane in there. Matter of fact, that was one of the first conversations I had with him was he called me up looking for a good Dane. And, uh, you know, we both commiserated on how hard that was to find. So he makes the effort. That's why I believe that the Neapolitan that's in there is is not just any old Neapolitan. The Bull Mastiff, the American Bulldog, everything that's in there. Matter of fact, uh, a buddy of mine who's better versed in pit bulls, American pit bull terriers, said the one that's in him, was a dog named Jeep, is famous, right? I didn't even know. But I trusted David to not just be throwing any old dogs together. And that's kind of the key. Anybody can mix dogs, anybody can breed dogs. But what separates breeders is the effort that they make uh, to get good genetics and to, to, to work from there. So, you're looking really at the product of um, a lot of years of effort. This dog's probably about 140 pounds, legit, 135, 140. She's probably 125. 
Um, people who sell big dogs, almost without exception, lie about their weights. So at some point we'll start doing video weigh-ins. It's not that that's so important, but it's, uh, you know, people lie. Breeders in particular of big dogs lie. It's crazy how, how few exceptions to that there are. But um, nice looking pups. They'll start leaving next weekend. I can still take a male deposit and a female deposit at this date. Um, and the way my system works, uh, it's not first come first serve. So the best the last guy in could pick first if his offer is better than the others. Um, and that's the way it should be, in my opinion. That's why it's that way here. But anyway, I wanted to just talk a little to people who maybe, you know, not the choir. I don't want to preach to the choir. Yeah, this, the people that just came in off the street. Um, the truth of the matter is that all the mainstream breeds are, are ruined. And... Um, so this is an, uh, one day we may have something we call the Olympic Dane. This is a step in that direction, but I could call these Olympic Danifs. I've seen it. We've done this before. We know what we get. We get a big Dane sized dog with a nice square head and tight jowls and not that goofy look that you see in a Dane, in American Danes anyway. So anyway. I gotta do something to keep myself occupied with these videos, which are generally kind of silly. Uh, weekly puppy videos, but the pups look good. Two of the three brindles are male, two of the three blacks are female. Um, and they'll start leaving next weekend, whatever date that is. Today's a Monday, so roughly the 30th. For more information, if you're curious, if you want a more literate, less off the cuff, more eloquent explanation of why we do what we do, etc., the website is a good place to go for text. www.olympicdogs.net. Um, it's kind of out of date in many ways, but the text tends to stand the test of time.